Okay, I hit the erase button. So let me explain again what we're going to do here. Um, I'm going to not spend a lot of time teaching you how to use Excel in this class uh, or even for our guests from that renewable world. Congratulations on the $5,000, by the way. Uh, can I go too? Anyway, um, you guys will have a great conference, those of you who are going down to Madison and Soils uh, folk. I want you to be aware of uh, the interfacing that we're going to see between renewable energy and civil engineering here. Um, these things have to be maintained. They're actually going into physical plants, some of them in the ground. But, so that said, I'm going to go through real quickly my two things that I want you to know about Excel. You're learning lots of great class stuff in Excel class and then Word class and then an intermediate Excel and maybe the advanced Excel. I'm not certain they, they even take, take you out to the point where we start in engineering, which is in fact learning how to use a log and semi-log graph um, for soil uh, gradation. So what I'm going to do here is um, I am going to also link you out uh, to something out of TED.com to show you what data visualization really looks like, but I'm going to point out that usually when we do soil gradations it is on a semi-log curve with in fact one of the axes being the particle size, that is the one that is on the log scale, and percent passing being the other one. So that said, I started my kind of, I'm going to insert a column here and give you a, so you can see it, its diameter in millimeters, and this is going to be percent passing. Right, so I just kind of started what might be a 6 inch, remember the 25.4, 3 inch, I guess I'll go ahead and add a 1 inch, I'm going to in, insert, I'm going to add if we had a 1 inch sieve, so that's about 25 millimeters, 4.75, 2, 1, the rest of these I'm going to kind of make up based on the going by half. These are not the numbers, you need to get those off the sieves or off of a table. These are pretty standard and you don't necessarily, when you're doing a gradation, need to get particular sieves. The more the better, but you can only stack them so high. You're trying to avoid having too many particles on one sieve. The, the maximum amount that's allowed on a sieve is a function of basically the sieve size. And so if you, in other words, sieve size in terms of is it an 8 inch diameter, a 12 inch diameter, a 10 inch diameter, more or less the surface area of the sieve. So I'm going to keep going down here, 0.125, and then eventually I'm going to go to 0 0.075, which we remember is that number 200 sieve, and I'm going to then jump all the way down to 0 0.035, just making things up right at this point in time, but we want to go then down to this division of 0 0.002, even down to half that, that's the basic 0 0.001 which would be the kind of the clay size clay size fraction and even to the point where you've got particles that are half a micron or smaller that are clay particles. I'm just going to put in some numbers here. You all know how to use Excel, so I'm going to put in save myself some time. I'm going to put equals here this minus 10 and then go ahead and pull that down. Hopefully I will get up oh, every time I try to get fancy. And so, oh, well, that's not going to work. So let's make sure that maybe in the middle there, we've got 60 again and 60 again, because you can't have at a point where there's less than 0% passing. So we're going to see this graph right here is now going to have no sizes um, in this middle size here. So it's got a bunch of gravel and then a bunch of stuff that's down in this level. All right, what's the rule to graphing in Excel? You tell Excel what to graph, you don't let it tell you what to graph. That's the first one. And XY scatter is the other one. So I'm going to go ahead here, hit an insert, go to the scatter graph. It gives you a bunch of choices. I would really recommend that you do it with just the markers to start. Don't let it try to draw lines between these things. It will confuse your brain with markers and boy look at that it made something already the problem is it selected the data without you telling what you wanted to do so you want to go to actually select data and immediately remove what it gave you now you're going to add and you're going to select the X range which is the what's along the bottom here and that's going to be the diameter or the particle size Then you're going to click back to here and you're going to collect the Y value which is the percent passing from there, you hit OK, and you're doing fine, but the reality is this is not given what you want. This is, you know, just throwing some things together. The next step, and there's other ways to do it, 
but I might say my general sense is to then click on here and then right click on the axes and format the axis. The axis that's along the bottom will be the <clears throat> diameter and what you want to do is you want to make it logarithmic and values in reverse order um, is one of the standards or it can be the reverse. You can have values going from small to large or large to small here but typically very often at least in the labs that we did uh, we're going to go from large to small. You then can set and fix hopefully so you can kind of fix your maximum here your major your maximum unit really 200 doesn't make much sense if you're in the order of 150 really realistically you should make this largest a thousand and you'll see why in a second you go up to the next multiple of 10 I'm sorry power of 10 you go through you, you mark all these and you these right here will be a couple you'll have to play around with you're gonna come back a couple of times and hit close here and it gave you this the last thing you can do you then you really if you're going from zero in a percentage you go to zero to 100 you click on that access right here format the access you go from zero to 100 so 100 percent I also recommend you really avoid doing too much crazy stuff when you're in engineering with a percent label now you've pretty much got what you want this is what a, a, a gradation curve would look like the small things that you need to do that kind of play around is to kind of go here and right click format access and it's right here you want to go uh, access label high I think is we that's what does it look at that so there you got it you're gonna get your labels in there later that is how to use Excel advanced advanced or basic entries here's what you do you put your data in you make sure you don't have any gobbledygook you don't put your millimeters you don't use your feet you just have hard raw data here either real numbers or integers you stack it up and then you tell Excel what you want to graph and you use the XY scatter once the program kind of does what it wants to do you go in and format the axes you format the y-axis by double clicking on the y-axis I think and right clicking on it you hit a format axis you change the x-axis to values in reverse order and, log and logarithmic scale and you change the y-axis so you can keep double check that it is from 0 to 100 and then kind of play around with these until you get everything every <clears throat> everything the way you like it there you've got a graph um, that's how to do a um, a soil gradation and from there you can see you can print it out or you can do all kinds of other stuff to figure out things like what is the median particle size that is the particle size at which 50 percent is finer what is the effective size that is the particle size at which 10 percent is finer what is the coefficient of gradation coefficient of uniformity which comes from calculations of d60 the diameter which 60 percent is finer and d60 d30 d20 these terms are the next step for those in the soils class of your kind of recognition of vocabulary here we kind of showed you excel uh, sure i'll let you do this as you should be using excel as a tool um, believe it or not those of us who have been shifted in this curriculum behind us the ability to kind of run excel has been added as a or I'm sorry technology is the word we use has been added as an eighth grade competency at this point so those of us who are beyond eighth grade we missed it and so learning how to use Excel uh, apply it as many different ways as you can especially to graphics to complement what you know in AutoCAD or Photoshop or SketchUp or paint is a big big thing so this is a great example of how to do that we'll probably do it with all of you and we'll take a look at some other logarithmic curves as well you notice here finally this is a one two three four five six seven cycle and if you're gonna start comparing soil to soil you need to keep them on the same number of cycles so you can lay the sheets over them and start to recognize what a soil gradation curve looks like uh, in terms of is it gap graded is it well graded poorly graded uh, what is the median particle size how will it perform in terms of permeability? How will it perform in terms of um, transferring energy? Now, a lot of this is just looking up in the book, what is this soil? But understanding of a soil gradation chart goes a lot beyond just soils. It goes into basic understanding of what a uh, cumulative distribution curve looks like. See you later. Bye.